Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is the 13th of March 2021 and this is the Flight Sim News. So it's been pretty quiet on the Flight Sim front to be honest. Uh, it's kind of the main reason why the uh, the flow of Flight Sim News has been limited to about once a week at this point. Uh, things just haven't been all that exciting to talk about. Um, but uh, Eagle Dynamics finally had something to say this week. While we don't have an update update, we do have an update on some of what they have going on. Uh, still waiting to see when that next open beta is going to drop to give us the pretty clouds. But until then, uh, they posted, in order to simplify mission creation and weather selection, we have designed a large number of cloud presets which are convenient to select from the mission editor. Here are a few thumbnails to give you an idea of what will be available and then they provide a link to the screenshot section over there. But I'm just going to click these ones. Gotta admit, those clouds do look pretty freaking amazing. But again, I'm very skeptical because I want to see what they're going to do to the performance. But again, they look pretty damn good. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out and uh, how well it affects the overall environment. But I think it's going to be worth it because it looks amazing. And again, I haven't seen anything like this in any other flight sim. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all works out in the end. I will throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself. Next up from Eagle Dynamics from this week, they go on to talk about the P 47 delivery competition. Uh, they go on to say, votes are counted, and we will be announcing the winners of our P 47 livery contest very soon. If you haven't picked up the P 47D yet, you can get it here. And then they throw a link to it at their site, and then they talk about uh, and check out a wealth of P 47 tutorials here from the Grim Reapers, and they throw that in there. However, they just posted this 20 hours ago, and they go on to say we would like to extend a special thanks to all the participants in the P-47D Thunderbolt livery competition. All winners will receive a copy of the Mosquito once early access is released. And uh, then there's a link to the forums. Bring you over to the forums page, and they show some of these P-47s. And I'll be the first to admit, that is pretty freaking impressive. That is a really, really nice skin. And I am going to do my best to get over there and download that because that one right there, that's fantastic. Absolutely love the Indian headdress with the skull. Awesome sauce, it really is. And as you scroll down, I believe they have some of the other winners in here. There's another one. Really, really nice work that these guys have done. I will throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. While we are talking about the P-47D Thunderbolt, Greg, over at Reflected Simulations, has put together a video, and uh, Greg is doing tutorials now, which is pretty freaking cool. So it's the P-47D Thunderbolt startup takeoff and landing tutorial lesson and uh, he's done this basically uh, ahead of time because he's going to be doing that uh, was it the Wolfpack P47D campaign. I don't talk much about Falcon 4 it doesn't do anything for me but I know there's a lot of guys out there that still fly it and like to play it and I, I happened upon this the other day over at the Falcon 4 BMS page on Facebook and it goes on to talk about some shots from recent testing of the Nevada theater for Falcon BMS this is beta 2 and does not have a release date videos and more coming soon as we work through some of the campaigns and here are the images that they provided nice little uh, splash screen there for the user interface Looks like uh, a couple of raptors at, uh, is that Nellis? Is, is that what they're doing there? Another raptor. Another raptor. So 
this is going to be interesting. Um, I haven't flown this in forever, so I didn't even know they had a Raptor. But uh, I think it looks like something that I might be interested in if they do end up with a Raptor in there. I know they had like a Hornet in there a while ago. But um, I think the hardest thing for me with Falcon 4 BMS is just getting over the graphics. And I know people have said this before, but I've said that, you know, to me, when I look at Falcon 4 BMS, I still see Falcon 4.0. And people are like, oh, well, they've changed the graphics. The graphics are completely different, blah, blah, blah. Well, that came out in 1998. It is 2021. So even if they updated the graphics eight years ago, it still does not look all that great to me. And I have a very hard time with that because, it, again, it just... I don't know. Maybe it's the color palette, something. It just does not appeal to me that much. In 1998, I thought it was fucking fantastic, but today, uh, I have a hard time with it after having seen DCS. So that's what the big stumbling block, I guess, is for me overall when it comes to Falcon 4 BMS. But and that's not to take away any of the work that Benchmark Sims has done, because I know under the hood, it is a completely different animal and uh, they've really put a lot of you know blood, sweat, and tears into it to make it what it is today, and that's why so many people still fly it today as it is. So I will throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. Next up, Baltic Dragon just made a post on Facebook, and it says, Hey guys, I'm about to start rebuilding all the stock quick action missions for the Harrier on different maps, and I thought I'd ask you, uh, what is it that you'd like to see added there? Granted, these won't be long sorties with custom VOs, but easy tasks allowing you to easily practice something or just have some fun. And all ideas slash suggestions are welcome. And there's a variety of uh, comments and suggestions on this thread so far, which is really good. Uh, I think I would say I like to do a lot of dumb bombing. I like to drop a bunch of like Mark 82s, you know. Uh, that's the kind of thing I like to do in the Harrier. Uh, maybe some practicing using the Mavericks on a uh, target rich environment, you know. That's the kind of thing I would like to see. Uh, I think that harbor, there's a harbor on the um, Normandy map, I believe that I've made various videos uh, covering. And if you use that harbor area and just make it a super target rich environment, you know, and start the Harrier out right outside uh, the water there coming in towards it, you know, I think that would be super fun. I like to see things that are just visually appealing, you know, may not always be the most realistic thing, but I'm looking to have fun when I jump into a flight simulation more than doing something that has been done before that somebody else did that is realistic if that makes any sense you know like honestly when you think about it guys I don't know how many of the World War II missions that are realistic that you've flown and um, I love the passion that Greg has at Reflected Simulations because he makes the best ones like that but sometimes for me um, I don't want to sit there and fly for an hour and a half to do something that takes me three minutes to perform, you know? Um, I like to have something that is target rich and exciting and visually appealing to see as you approach it and then make a mess with some bombs or some other types of ordnance, you know? That's the kind of stuff I'm into, but it's more of that instant gratification, I guess, is where my mindset is when it comes to missions and flight simulations. Those are the ones that are the most memorable to me. The ones I, I want to forget the most easily are those where I've got to fly for hours to do something that takes two to three minutes to perform and then fly, you know, if it's an hour and a half mission, you're flying, you know, 40 minutes there, a couple minutes to do the task, and then 40 minutes back, you know. Um, unless that path has a bunch of cool stuff to peer out the window and look at as you're going, 
uh, it's not something that I usually enjoy, you know. But that's where my mindset is. So if you ask me what kind of missions I would like to see for the Harrier, um, pick a bunch of locations that look really target rich, but are also visually appealing to look at. Make something excited. Um, I, I like the Hollywood type of thing, you know. Call it the Michael Bay mindset. You know what I mean? Like, give me a Michael Bay Transformers, <laughs> you know, uh, set to destroy. That kind of thing. Lots of bombs, explosions, colorful. You know, that's where my mindset is. Uh, not so much doing all the same things that somebody else once did that happened that there's all this historical data on. That's not entirely my thing. Uh, I get that people want to do that. And some of that stuff I'm sure I would enjoy. You know, there's been missions in the past I've flown that were realistic that somebody else had done and they were fun. Um, but again, sometimes in like some of the warbirds where you're going slow, <laughs> 250 to 350 knots or something like that for a while it takes forever to get from point A to point B and uh, I just fall asleep man I really do so these are instant action missions that they're talking about or quick action whatever they, they're called and uh, with that kind of mindset I think he can do some really cool stuff and Baltic Dragon is one of the best you know mission designers out there he's right up there with Greg at Reflected Simulations two of the best that the industry has to offer when it comes to DCS world but um, those are my thoughts on that at least I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself alright last up is an update from IL2 Stormovic this is developer diary number 275 and this is kind of a lengthy one I'm gonna try to not read the entire thing um, and just give you kind of the condensed version so uh, it goes on to talk about they're creating a new technology called DVD which means dynamic visual damage in a nutshell it places an impact mark where the projectile hit and then they go on to talk about in here how it's not replacing the damage system they have because this this DVD damage isn't going to uh, affect the subsystems and the physical aircraft. The, the existing damage system still handles that. Uh, but what it will do is give you a more appealing visual look to what's going on. And then they go on to say, speaking of this new DVD tech, we must note that due to the ever complex issues of graphics performance and network traffic and stability, there are some limitations of to what can be done. Uh, this may be apparent in some cases, but we have to mention them. In certain critical cases, the mark may not appear or a wrong type mark may appear like a visual penetration where was a near perfect penetration. In fact, there's also a limit to the total amount of marks that can be placed on an object. In multiplayer, you'll see the marks on your aircraft or tank, but you'll only see the marks on other player aircraft or tanks that appeared when they were in your view. To alleviate this limitation, we've added special transmission of the most recent marks to other players, even if they were looking the other way. Um, and then they go on to say, because of these compromises, the DVD tech doesn't replace the current visual damage system completely. The current system of visual damage levels guarantees that every player in multiplayer environment will get the visual cues on how badly a certain object is damaged. Uh, DVD is designed to enhance existing visual damage system, and we made every effort to make them work harmoniously during its development. Nevertheless, in multiplayer you'll see marks on your aircraft and marks on your opponent's aircraft, which is the most important and critical application of this tech. If you saw the hits of someone else's projectiles on another player, you'll also see these marks. Uh, the limitations listed above, however, won't undermine the improved visual look of the damage system the new DVD tech will bring. We hope we found the sweet spot between visual quality and the least impact on graphics performance and multiplayer. To illustrate the new system, we would like to show you these work in progress game screenshots. So there's quite a bit of damage on that, and that looks fantastic. I love how it looks like the shell hit and then slid across that. You, I don't know if you can see that on that front there. And it looks like it hit and then just scraped across it. That's pretty freaking impressive. And then there's more examples of the damage.
pretty stunning stuff. Again, hopefully it doesn't take too much out of the performance. But I wouldn't think it would. I mean, you just place it there and you're done with it. It's not like it's like, you know, moving or something, you know? Yeah, look at those those bullet marks and then the big hole in the tail. That's fantastic, man. These guys are just continually hitting it out of the park, man. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you haven't flown IL-2, um, you really got to give the Great Battle series a try. Especially because as much as this stuff is on sale, it is just so damn cheap. But it's not cheap in quality. It's cheap in price, you know. I think 12 or $13 will get you any of the basic, you know, Battle of Stalingrad, um, Battle of Kuban, and Battle of Moscow, etc. And then I think around the $20 mark is what you'll pay for a premium version, which comes with the two collector's planes. And I would highly recommend just shelling out the 20 bucks and getting any of those with the collector's planes with them and uh, giving it a shot. And I don't think you'd be disappointed. I really don't. It is just so much fun, and it's so much value for the money, and still blows away DCS when it comes to Warbirds. The, I think DCS Warbirds and the visual environment of the terrain look a little bit better, but the in-cockpit stuff is catching up. IL-2, I think, is almost every bit as nice as what they do in DCS. I think there's just a hair more photorealism in the DCS cockpits versus what they have in IL-2, but it is so close at this point that you're not missing anything in IL-2. That's for damn sure. And uh, just for the money, it is so worth it. And it's so much fun. And these guys really do continue to uh, progress their technology and just put together amazing stuff to make this great battle series what it has become. I've seen a couple of guys make comments on the uh, videos and they've said, hey man, I haven't played IL-2 since the original. Dude, you have no idea what you're missing right now. You really don't. It's day and night, man. Um, it is just so much better. Uh, I never imagined flight sims would be where they are today. I had only dreamed about stuff like this back in the heyday in the 90s when we had what we had. Never knew that it was ever going to get to this level. So, uh, yeah, if, if you haven't flown IL-2, you really need to. And again, it's on sale for cheap so much that it's just, it's almost like they're giving it away, guys. They really are. So that is it for the Flight Sim News for this week. Uh, as always, thanks so much for watching. Uh, definitely please subscribe to the channel and take a minute to browse through a lot of the uh, library videos too. There's a lot of good stuff that I have in there and uh, I'd hate to see you guys miss something good. So jump in there and see if there's anything else that might uh, pique your interest. And um, as always, until next time.